Hello and welcome to Exiles. I can't tell you how excited I am to start Val Venom Gyre. I took some time to put together a thorough POB, giving instructions on where we get passives, when we get passives, also a plan for how we get to Val Venom Gyre. Val Venom Gyre itself isn't a strong league starter. If I pick it up at level 12, it's going to be bad. I tried it myself. I wanted to make sure to have some comparison. I wanted to be able to say, hey, I recommend starting with it right at level 12, picking it up versus not. And Let's just say it was bad starting at level 12, but that's because you need basically a weapon. If you have a weapon, it would probably be fine while leveling, but getting a weapon and constantly upgrading it as you go through the axe is a super big pain. It's a lot more management. It wastes a lot of time. And really, why do that when ultimately there is such an easy skill we can use that is just straight up overpowered on leveling and easy to gear, and it's just gonna be a smooth experience. The reason this works is because as Poison Concoction is an overpowered skill, it also is a skill that requires almost no respec in terms of passives. You'll notice on my character, I have eight refund points. I have already spent two of them by Act 9. Eight will be enough to do the respecs I need for this character to be the character I have for Val Venom Gyre. The only real difference is, is early on, I bum rush precise technique. We're not going to be using that with our Val Venom Gyre setup. And there's other things like early on, I grab these proj damage and attack speed nodes. This is solely to make our leveling experience a good time, but we have enough respect points built in just we get from for, for free from the campaign as we level, we will be able to unspec all of this stuff and our tree will be completely ready to go as Val Venom Gyre. The plan is simple. We are going to level this poison concoction and then looking at our POB, in our notes section, I go over the transition. What do we need for the transition? It's pretty simple. We need a good claw, and ideally a wasp nest. Early on, wasp nest is a fairly common unique, and it's about 400 PDPS slash chaos DPS. It's very hard to beat early on, especially unless you're making a really good claw, and it should be affordable early league. Worst case scenario, we'll, get, we'll go for something like a 250 DPS claw, something in that range. Moral of the story is we need a good claw, and the other thing I want to do before we swap to Val Venom Gyre is basically every time we drop a Val Orb, we throw it on a Venom Gyre and we try to get a Val version of it. That's the two things we need to make the swap. Once we have those things, roughly it'll be around the 65 to 75 range. That's when we swap over the skills, and it's a simple respec. All it really ends up being is, um, well, actually I'll just do it in POB because it's easy to show. Uh, if we go to the trees, you'll see here. At level 62, for example, this is still this is still the tree that's set up for poisonous concoction. And you'll see if I go over here, I click the 72 tree. The only thing that changes is we're unspecking out of these nodes and going over to these travel nodes here. That's all we have to do. It's not complicated. It's super easy, super straightforward. And then there's the other thing of once we get our accuracy to start being below our life pool, that's when you unspec out of this. It's just a little bit of like making the leveling experience a good time. Precise technique is very OP early on for leveling. It means your hit damage is actually pretty good. Even though we are scaling mostly into poison, this is relevant early on for poisonous concoction. It's something I would not skip and it's easy to unspec one point and we're fine. So that's, that's basically the gist of how this character develops. We start out with poisonous concoction super smooth leveling i would i put some notes down basically on when we get gems and what skills we go for i basically every time we got a quest reward that was important for a skill gem we were going to change or put into the build i added some notation for that mostly this stops happening around act four and then from act four onward it's basically just cruising through the campaign we're, we're just basically just annihilating things as we go and just shield charging around poison concoction plague bear it's pretty simple it's going to be really smooth i have to say I've done a lot of league starts on non-meta skills, and this is almost converting me, almost converting me. As somebody who is a hardcore, I don't want to play something meta, this is making me realize how good the meta players have it. That was some of the most disgustingly like easy leveling I've ever had, and it was on a character with fresh league star gear, complete trash, and it still just completely just smashed the content. It felt like I had basically twink gear while i was leveling because that's how strong poisonous concoction was in comparison to just your average skill that doesn't really have all of the basically initial power it needs i went through and put together a set of leveling trees just to give you an idea of when we get passives you can just go through it and as you go you just it's pretty simple straightforward i also have the basically ascendancy point changes which shows you which labs to get when um at what level stuff like that hopefully my goal with this note section is to 
keep everything straightforward for you. I even went ahead and basically searched up how to do a rejects for the early, um, essentially movement speed boots and three green sockets. This is the very important thing pretty much for this character to operate. We need to have early on, we need a three green socket like helmet, body armor, gloves, boots, shield, any of those we can find. If it's a three green weapon, we can't use it. And all you really have to do is you go to a vendor, you have basically that code I put in the POB, you control V, you control P, or control C, control V it, basically paste it in here, and it'll highlight things that are chromes, which will help you to recolor gear if you need to, or things that are three green links, which is exactly what we need for our early links. It's volley, onslaught, poisonous concoction, and you use this basically until act four, when you get greater volley, and greater multiple projectiles at that point you're looking for a four green link and it's still just cruising with onslaught it's a good time so this is just a way for to highlight basically items that are the correct link colors we need stuff that we can buy that we can sell for a chrome and then if we have movement speed boots in the inventory pick those up early on and you know the moving process or the campaign process is just going to be a lot smoother so to speak um i also should say <clears throat> I also should say, uh, other things I have in here are things about flasks. This is a Pathfinder and our flasks are very important. I wanna make sure that everybody knows why we're choosing the flasks we are and the things we wanna go for. Cause early on you get their, your flasks set up, that's a large portion of how powerful our ascendancy is. And that's things like Quicksilver for roughly, it's gonna end up getting us about 70% movement speed regularly cause we're gonna have it up for basically permanent uptime. Silver flask for speed and damage cause it's going to give us close to 40% attack, cast and movement speed, which is big with the new silver flask change. Jade flask basically helps us get close to evade cap. That combined with grace is a really good time for getting an evasion. And then the other important thing is we have a divine flask. Now these are four flasks. I actually have for the fifth flask. This is going to be a flexible flask slot. Basically, apply it to your play style how you want to make the build. And I have options here for myself. I think I might go go, go for a gold flask just for that early farm of early, basically magic find loot early. But you could also go for say quartz and you want permaphasing or you want to cap your spell suppress, but you don't have good suppress on your gear. Or you could even go for something like bismuth to make your res cap just way, way easier. A bismuth with an all res suffix is basically going to cap you on res by itself, which means you can have gear that only has life on it and you're still going to be res cap sort of situation. Or you could go things for chaos res, for amethyst, or even going for a granite. A granite is going to involve an alternate tree, which basically... The alternate tree is just trying to prioritize getting charisma so that way you can fit determination into the aura setup you're going to drop herald of agony to do it but this allows you to have determination granite flask and percent armor as a suffix on your granite flask and basically what that means is even though we're in evasion based character on the evasion based side of the tree you're actually going to end up getting armor than a lot of other ascendancies because of how much your basically flask effect gives you percent armor as well as flat armor from that and it'll solve your phase i don't think we're going to need it so i'm not actually planning on using this tree myself but i want to have that option there for people that want to go for that extra tank if you feel like you're dying to fizz there's a very easy solution with pathfinder that you can solve it and it's not going to be a big deal other things i want to note is I have recommended suffixes. For your flasks, I really recommend attack speed, evasion rating, and additional all res. I've tried to go through and look at all the possible suffixes on flasks. These are what I believe are the most powerful ones for our character. Evasion rating helps us get a whole lot of evasion. It's equivalent to getting like almost 100% increased evasion on our character, a little bit more actually. Additional all res, close to 70 all res as a suffix. The attack speed suffix gives about 30% attack speed. These are all really, really big buffs to the character. Those are the ones I'd recommend. In addition to those, this is kind of up to you for the flex flask. You can go for like, for example, curse reduction. Pretty much makes you immune to curses, makes mapping really, really clean. You don't have to worry about curses. You go for movement speed if you really just are degenerate and you want even more speed. We're already going to be fast, but this makes you faster. Uh, in case you have mana issues, we shouldn't with the little bit of percent leech we're going to have. Uh, but if you do, if we do find out we have mana issues, we can run reduced mana cost. We also can go for something like a stun avoid, which is going to avoid, basically make a stun immune. Between the stun avoid we get on the tree from the life nodes near path or near the ranger start and the stun avoid from one flask. That's basically going to make you stun avoid. This is a special affix in that you can only get it from un unveiling a cinder swallow. Same with reduced mana and same with the extra rarity. I'll leave that up to you. Apply it to your own playstyle. Say stuns are getting annoying. Hey, 
get stone avoid and you're solved say curse is a problem then gets curse removal stuff like that pick and choose based on your own play style what you like what you prefer but these are my recommendations on top of that i have some early game links which is basically hey while we're leveling this is the kind of skill gems we're going for i should note shield charge you have to do siosa quest and act three to get um basically you need this to have real feels good movement for poison concoction leveling but eventually once you swap out of that you're going to be going to whirling blades and that'll be a-okay have our gem links for Venom Gyre. I haven't fully decided on all of our utility, basically extra skill gems or what we're going to use there. So I'm leaving this open-ended. This is something where I'm going to play the league start and I'm going to feel it out. Day one, I might think, okay, I'm trying this skill, see how it feels. And then I'll say, hey, this is worth doing or it's not worth doing. Moral of the story is I'm planning to upload daily updates to this character as the league progresses to say hey these are the gem links i'm using now this is what's working this is what i found is fun yada 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 and i'll improve this as we go on which is basically just something i want to feel out and make sure in game what practically feels good to play uh, other stuff is pretty simple gearing Th this is all could be summed up in one simple sentence which is rare gear with life and res a wasp nest and eventually we want to get a covenant for really big damage that's pretty much it uh this is not a very hard um, build in terms of getting gear you really just need a little bit of life a little bit of res and you get a lot of your res for free from a flask so it ends up being pretty smooth i would say there is a little bit of spell suppress we need to get on our tree we're getting about i forget i think it's like 75 percent uh yeah 75 percent so we're gonna get about 25 spell suppress from our gear that's one shield a zero step or just a couple spell suppress rolls on two pieces of gear basically is what it is should be fairly easy to cap that off other things i have are miscellaneous pretty self-explanatory just going answering some random questions with their application i have a, a section on this if i think of more information about stuff i should add to this section basically to help explain things i'll do so but for the most part i'm just trying to cover all the basic obvious questions that relate to why are we doing this character why do i think it's good stuff like that hopefully this tree and this note section gives you a sound thing to work with in terms of okay this is what i can do this is how i practice my character and that's going to work great. You can also watch the stream live. I will be streaming this on Twitch and I will be posting daily uploads basically saying, okay, this is the progress this is what the character looks like, yada, yada, yada. So you'll have that to work with if you are following this league start. And currently, I just want to showcase this just to give you an idea of what we're working with in terms of, hey, this is what it's going to look like while leveling or before you swap to Venom Gyre. Venom Gyre will be the character where you're procking Val Venom Gyre, shooting out projectiles. Should be a lot of fun while mapping, but before then, the build's pretty good too because Poison Concoction is just a good character. This is a character that's level 64. I have only done the first two labs, and I have kind of whatever gear. But this is what you can expect, the power level you're working with, even though we're just kind of in, in a midpoint stage of the character, okay? It's pretty simple. We press our flasks, we run through, we poison stuff, and I accidentally activated my Plague Bear and wasted it. But uh, yeah, you can see it's it's just like basically you're annihilating stuff, you get to a rare, and then, and then you keep going anyways. It's not really a, uh, oh, how do I put this? It's, it's just a really good, really, really good league starter I'm, i've been amazed with how easy poison concoction has made the leveling experience feel um another thing i want to note that i was excited about trying to do with this character is um i uh, sorry i'm getting a little sidetracked in my thought but one of the things i should note about things i changed for this character is going for one note into phasing on kill i thought about it a little bit more on my on my passive tree uh, also, that's this note here. Uh, basically gives you permanent phasing while mapping. This is something you don't have to go for, but I think it makes it feel pretty good and I think it's worth it. Another thing I should note is initially when you level this character, you're going to start out with the gain life per hit with attacks 10 and 5 respectively. This is OP early on. It's a ton early on. Later in the game, it starts to fall off, which is where we are right about now. You can see in the Blood Aqueducts there, I wanted to showcase this. It, it starts to fall off in terms of mana sustain a little bit. All you have to do, this is one other respec I want to mention. It's really good early on, gets you all the way to Blood Aqueducts, but I think when you're about at Blood Aqueducts, then you want to switch to Leech instead, because at this point, Leech is going to be a better mis uh, sustain. I just wanted to showcase, basically. You could see during that run there, we were starting to have um, basically what would be a small amount of mana problems sort of thing. Um, then we can showcase this with Delirium, I guess. That's fine. Delirium's a good a good indicator of if a build's good if you can run it. Um, 
because it's something that makes the content a decent amount harder in terms of basically monsters get damage reduction and whatnot um as well as i don't know whether what, what other stuff it does it's mostly just damage reduction i think it maybe makes them do a little bit more damage but i'm not 100 percent sure to be honest um and it's still just like it's still just a matter of just cruising through shield charging around and this is all just stuff we're going to be doing in terms of farming our way just to get enough chaos orbs to buy ourselves a wasp nest and enough val orbs to val ourselves a val venom gyre it's only a temporary stage in the life cycle but a necessary one at that i should say it is a little bit important to um I want to say be a little bit more careful about wasting all the mana on the uh, basically shield charge. Hmm. I thought leech would be enough, but leech might not be enough actually now that we're playing this. It doesn't seem consistently enough. To me at least it doesn't right now. So maybe life gain or mana gain on hit is still the play. If it ends up being that mana is an issue i think it's going to be really solved pretty easily with reduced mana cost and we are going to get in another claw mastery here we go leech and gain mana on hit that might be necessary but we'll see i'm going to play it out obviously this is something that i'm going to basically tweak and update as the league goes on I'm really kind of surprised because i wasn't having too much issues with mana before that delirium run i just did so or before the run before the delirium run so maybe mana on hit is still the play at this point and i was uh i wasn't giving it the respect it deserves in in swapping to the the leech mastery either way it's something we're gonna feel out something we're gonna perfect as we go i'm still really excited for this leech start i think it's gonna be fantastic in terms of just super early easy progression and then a nice swap once we get a wasp nest so as always hopefully you guys enjoyed the video hopefully the the notes I give in the path of building explain well on basically what to go for in basically progressing the character, swapping out gear, yada yada, all that sorts of stuff. And then for my items here, I just imported this SSF run I had of the character's gear that I have on that I just showcased in the Blood Aqueducts. This isn't really like go for this type of gear specifically. This is just random stuff I'd picked up while I was leveling this character in this test run. So, oh, excuse me, man. All right. Hopefully it explains it well. And uh, I'll see you guys on League Start. Uh, I'm probably gonna make a couple more videos before the League Start drops, stuff like bait or no bait. Uh, you should expect that. But until uh, the League Start, hopefully you guys have fun. And that's when we'll probably have our next video on this character. Will be the next, the first basically upload of saying, hey, day one progress. This is how the character did. This is what we encountered. This is the things we had to change. These things we adjusted, made it better. Stuff like that. I'll play through it, and I'll, I'll give you guys basically regular updates on how to improve the character as we go. So, as always, thanks for watching. Take care, Exiles.